Hello, wonderful. This is tax coach Susan, protecting taxpayers with easy to understand tax classes. 2020 was a roller coaster. I mean, there was huge ups and downs and it was a very challenging year. But I also heard from many of you that it has been a real push to utilize this time to reflect and make drastic changes for the better. So I applaud you. Now the IRS is very busy implementing and probably changing what was being implemented before because of the many changes that we are still seeing happening now. Changes up to this date are here, but any changes that will happen after January 18 will not be here. All right, so let's start with the most important dates. February 12, 2021 is the day the IRS opens. And February 22nd of 2021 is when the IRS is going to update their IRS that God where's my refund. And the IRS is also going to start sending refunds for the earned income tax credit and the additional child tax credit the first week of March. Now, April 15, 2021 is a deadline for filing taxes or requesting an extension, but we're hoping the IRS will extend that deadline just like they did last year. All right, so now 12 updates, very important. The standard deduction for Mary filing jointly is 24,800. For Mary filing separate, 12,400. Head of households, 18,650. Single individuals, 12,400. It went up about $200 per person. And the federal tax rates are still on sale since it was changed four years ago. Right now it's 10 to 37%. And the amount of money that these tax rates are charged to went up about 1.8% higher. So for example, if you pay 10% on $10,000 last year, this year you would pay 10% on $10,180. So if you're applying to save money on an IRA and you are in the 10 to 12% tax bracket, the best option, it's going to be to put that money into a Roth IRA. But if you're in a high tax bracket, it depends, you know. Let's say that your tax rate when you retire is also high. So, for example, if you're in a 32% tax bracket and you project or you estimate that when you retire, your tax bracket will be a 22%, for example. Well, then you want to open a traditional IRA because you would pay 10% less, less taxes when you retire. See? But if your tax bracket, let's say, is 32% and you estimate that your tax bracket at retirement will be the same 32%, then of course you want to open a Roth IRA while these tax, these federal tax are on sale because it is very likely that these tax rates are going to go much higher in the year 2025 or even in 2021. All right, so tax update number three. Another change is that if you turn 70 and a half after December 31, 2019, you do not need to take your required minimum distribution until you turn 72 years young. <laughs> yeah, 72 years young. I like that. And the next update is under the CARES Act, there is no penalty for not taking your required minimum distribution. And the next tax update, there is a higher HSA contribution, self-only, it's $3,550. For family, it's $7,100. Now, when you contribute to your HSA or health savings account, it is similar to like a traditional IRA where you avoid paying federal tax, which could be from 10 to 37%. However, and listen to this, please. This is what makes the HSA great. Not only you do not pay federal taxes, but you also avoid paying Social Security tax and Medicare tax. That's another 7.65% to 15.3%. And of course, the money grows tax free. So before you open this HSA though, 
you want to get proper guidance. And the publication 969, it's a good way to start. Next tax update is a 401k or solo 401k. Now you can put 19 up to 19,500, but if you're over 50, you can put up to $26,000. So let's say you're an investor and you run your own business by yourself or you, you by yourself and your spouse. The solo 401k is definitely much better because it is simple. It's easier to manage for the freedom of investment choices that it gives you. So if you're a small business owner able to put more than 7,000 and you have no employees or you have employees, but they are fairly new or they are part-time, please check the solo 401k and get proper guidance setting a separate consultation in advance with your accountant. All right, the next one is IRAs. It's still the same, $6,000. And if you're 50, $7,000. So for the year 2020, IRA contributions, the deadline is April 15th, 2021. This is an, another excellent plan to implement, but always get customized guidance from your accountant. Now about getting customized guidance from your accountants, let me just give you a tip. Proper requests equals proper guidance. Always remember this. See, in other words, to get proper guidance, it is essential to send a proper request. See, accountants have to concentrate on one thing at a time because they're dealing with so many different complex things. They're dealing with numbers, right? So they're not supposed to be and they should not be answering any quick questions during a time when they're supposed to be concentrating or focusing on accuracy. So imagine if, a, if an accountant has 200 clients, they could have as much as 100 quick questions. You know, it just wouldn't work, right? So we all need to do our part so that we can work together to make sure that numbers are always accurate. I'm going to give you an incredible bonus tips, my friends, to make sure you get the proper guidance email your accountant the details of your questions and concerns ahead of time when you set up your separately paid consultation appointment. This way, your accountant can prepare ahead of time to give you the best possible strategy or guidance. See, when you pay for your schedule consultation separately, now they can block time to prepare and focus only on you. Oh yes. If your if your accountant doesn't have a way for you to choose an appointment, tell them about like there's so many free apps, you know? Like one of them is calendly.com. So this is the best advice that I can give you. And if you're a business owner and you're and it's your turn to give proper advice in your business, now you know how to guide your clients to send you proper requests. All right, so let's go to a tax of day eight. Under the CARES Act, you can deduct up to $300 in cash donations. Now this amount is separate from the standard deduction. So, and you don't have to put it in the Schedule A. So this is a very good, this is something new for 2020. So make sure you use it if you donate it cash. It doesn't apply to tools or clothing or furniture, none of that. It's just cash. It's strictly cash. Tax of date number, number nine, the IRS is accepting forms 1040X and 1040 SR electronically for 2019. And they are working to add more years. All right. Tax of date number 10, earned income credit, the maximum of is 6,660 up from 6,557. Now, these are the maximum earning amounts that single head of household, qualified widow or married filing jointly can earn to get the earned income tax credit, depending on how many children they have. This is one of those credits that you want to make sure you qualify. So, and that you get, you know, also, for this year, I read that the IRS in the IRS website that if necessary, you can actually use your 2019 income if your 2020 income 
does not give you the earned income tax credit. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Now, publication 596 is not available yet for 2020, but I hope that by February 12, 2021, which is the day that the IRS opens, I'm hoping that they will have it ready. And there you can get the details. All right, for tax update 11, the child tax credit is $2,000 and a single person can obtain it if they earn less than $200,000 and marry filing jointly less than $400,000. The child tax credit is for a child who is under 17 years of age uh, on December 31, 2020. And for and tax of day 12, for the other dependent credit, it's $500 still, and uh, and they can earn $200,000 or less if if you're single, and $400,000 or less if you're married filing jointly. It is per adult that is over the age of 17. And now, I would like to provide some light due to the confusion that I have heard in regards to the stimulus economic impact payment. For 2020, it is called economic impact payment, EIP. In 2021, it is called recovery rebate credit. So they're talking about the same $1,200 stimulus payment that was issued in 2020. But in 2021, they are calling it the rebate, recovery rebate credit, because some individuals did not receive it. See, and now they can recover it or get it if they qualify when they process their tax return this year. Now, the first stimulus of $1,200 for adult taxpayer, $500 per child, and the second stimulus of $600 per adult taxpayer and $600 per child, it's not reportable. So you do not have to report it as income and is not taxable. So as long as you earn less than, as a single taxpayer, less than $99,000 or less than $136,500 for head of households and less than $198,000 for married filing jointly, you can get this stimulus and you do not have to return it. Now, if you did not receive your stimulus payment, last year and you qualify you will get it when you file your 2020 taxes because it is based on your 2020 taxes if you receive the payment and you were not eligible in your 2020 tax return you are not required to return it you do not have to return it unless you receive it twice like if you if by error you receive 1,200 two times for one person, then you need to return it. Yeah. Now, in the event you have more questions, this website or this web address has many answers to different questions. It's actually pretty good. So I hope you give them a visit. So these are some reminders for identity protection pins. The IRS sent it mid January. And if you're a teacher, you remember you can deduct up to $250 for school supply expenses. If you need an extension to file, send Form 4868 before April 15 to avoid that 5% to 25% late filing penalty on the tax due. And if you need more time to pay your tax bill, you can actually send the Form 9465 or it is better if you do it online. Just go to the irs.gov slash OPA. And you can actually deduct losses. And from Ponzi type investments, fraud, and unrecovered investments in an annuity and a Schedule A. So look into that if that applies to you. If you qualify under Section 72, you can actually start to take regular yearly IRA distributions at age 55, as long as the amounts are the same and you do not miss any of the years. So my advice is that it should only be taken out 
if you are still working and you are in a low tax bracket and it is because you want to transfer those funds to a Roth IRA while, we having, while we're having this federal tax sale so you don't have to deal with taxes when you retire. That would be pretty much one of the best reasons, I would say. Otherwise, um, obviously you do not want to use up the money that you're going to leave off that's gonna that you're gonna use to eat after you retire. So far, there is no changes for the education credit on Form 8863 or for the tuition and fees deductions on Form 8917. Now, this is a quick reminder for this for students. There are two types of credits. One gives you 40% refundable credit, and the other gives you a tax liability reduction. Remember to deduct the amount you actually paid, like out of pocket for tuition and education expenses. If you use your own money or money from a loan to pay it, use that paid amount. So financial aids, grants, or scholarships, they do not count as money actually pay for education expenses. So it is in your best interest to verify that the Form 1098-T is correct. And the next one, is the tuition and fees deduction is up to four thousand dollars in income deduction so this is not accredited and it is a deduction for those who are in a higher tax bracket another tip there is no tax on interest that you accumulated when you cash a bond to use those funds for education expenses and there is no tax penalty and ira distribution when you also take those funds for higher education expenses. Just make sure that you get the entire information before you do all that. Now, this is another important tip. These are six most common professions in the market that can help you with tax matters. Each one of these people may focus on one, two, or three services. One through five are generally professions that must take classes each year if they want to maintain their certification or enrollment. That number six is not required to take classes each year, so they might not be up to date with current tax laws. If you have a complex tax situation or need complex tax planning, it is best to choose the top ones, depending on their expertise, education, and skill, because each will offer different types of services. However, you most likely will pay less to a non-credential tax preparer if you only have a very simple tax preparation that you prefer not to do it yourself. We may need all of them because all of us have different needs. My advice, however, is that you should really go to a professional who stays up to date with the current tax laws and that you understand so you do not end up losing any money. In regards to their services, there are five major tax services. Each is a separate block of time according to the education, skill, and expertise of the tax professional. For example, you can hire an attorney for a tax audit consultation, but only after the consultation service, you may decide then to hire this attorney to represent you in, in, a, in an audit. So kind of like a doctor, for example, a doctor may be a brain surgeon, but he may also do speaking engagements separately. Each is a separate block of time. Most people understand this concept, so this is only a reminder to be careful not to mix services when you schedule or block a specific amount of time for one of those services, one block of service at a time. In other words, it is best to be cautious not to mix tax planning with tax preparation or tax planning with tax representation. It is to the advantage of both individuals to block time for one service at a time. This is another way we can work together to declutter our financial guide. And this way we can conquer that tax jungle one, one step at a time. All right. Proper documentation equals proper tax preparation. <laughs> To speed up and save time, remember your W-2 and the serious 1099s. In other words, your, you need the info of your income, education, and mortgage interest, tuition, property taxes, donations, and identity protection PIN. 
Remember that letter that the IRS sends? In case it applies to you, make sure you have it for your accountant. Do not call your accountant if you know that you do not have all the documentations ready. You want to use your time wisely. And you want your accountant to use his time wisely. Right now, you know, we are in this transitioning to a new era. And part of this means that more self-organization is going to be required of us to achieve what we really want faster. So use this video to gather all your documents so you can send everything, everything together with notes or explanation in one email to your accountant so they can block a set amount of time to prepare your taxes and they can complete it accurately. So think about it like if you start cooking because you were told that you have all the ingredients and all of a sudden you're in the middle of cooking and then you realize you're missing like two or three ingredients, it's like, Ding, 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 ding. You will have to turn off everything. And then when you start cooking again, you have to spend extra or double time to remember what was already done and what was missing. So a tax professional might need to charge you extra just to compensate for the extra time he could not do the next tax return for the next person. And I want you to save money and receive only the best service possible now if your tax matter is complex and you need guidance to gather like all your documents because you're not sure it is best to set a consultation which is a separate service with your accountant so they can block that time to concentrate to focus only on you to give you the best possible guidance remember proper request equals proper guidance Hey, we're almost at the end. I just want to tell you that you're also going to find the 2021 small business tax updates because otherwise it would be way too long and a Spanish version of this video. Now, last, beware of illegal text, illegal email calls or social media channels that pretend to come from the IRS because the IRS doesn't initiate those types of contacts with taxpayers they will not get your personal information that way. If this happens, make sure that you report them at this email, phishing at irs.gov, or you can also call TICTA, 1-800-366-4484. And my wonderful friends, this is my way to protect and illuminate taxpayers with tax information, with tax tips, and my course, Tax GPS. My next class is actually gonna be this Spanish. It is called Navegación de Impuestos. It is the main frame of taxes, the main frame of accounting, and the main frame of tax planning. All in one course for solopreneurs, self-employed, or contractors who speak Spanish. So, with all my heart to yours, thank you for giving me the chance to be of service to you. Please share this information with your family, with your friends, so we can work together to simplify our tax life better. One, one mind, <laughs> one mind or one heart at a time. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe, share with your family and friends. I will embrace your inspiring comments. Until next time, remind your heart to smile and fight for your dreams with honor and undying determination. Thank you so much.